provider. But for this example, we want to use GPS provider. For minimum time, this is the minimum amount of time to go between updates. If we are concerned about battery life, we can actually give a number here that will say, wait at least this amount of seconds before you do another update. For our example here, we just wanted to update as quickly as possible, so we're just going to set that to zero. Minimum distance is don't trigger a new update unless you're X number of distance away from where we are right now. So if I walk over two paces, we don't want it to spawn another GPS update. So we can provide a minimum distance here. But again, I'm just going to put that to zero. Lastly, we want to provide the listener, and that's the one we just created, which is called listener here. So now we're registered to receive these updates. Now I want to go into the browser here and go to the SDK site. And if you go to the dev guide and then location maps, obtaining user location, there's a really great write-up on all of the details that come into play when you're dealing with GPS and location data. This is actually a pretty complicated set of considerations here you have to take into account. So this kind of goes through and gives you information about how it's set up. And there's a whole set of different things that we can listen for here. Now, one of the things you might want to do is when you first come into your application, because it can take a long amount of time sometimes for a GPS lock to happen. So we can actually use the last known location that the GPS sensor signaled in on. And to do that, we can actually get this by using this location manager dot get last known location. We can provide that as a basis for when we first come into the application. And then after the GPS has actually locked on, then we can update it. So we can do that. Again, we can come through and read about all the different things that come into play for dealing with battery life and things like that. So definitely want to look at this article. It gives you really in-depth information about how to do this. Now I'm going to run the application. And let's open up the emulator. You're probably wondering at this point, wait a minute, this is an emulator, so it doesn't have a GPS sensor in it. So how do we test our application? Well, we can see here when it comes in, it's going to load maps. And it's going to load it at the default location on the map. Let me actually zoom in here a little bit. So one of the nice things is we can actually control this and feed the emulator fake GPS data. So if we go back to Eclipse here, and we want to go to Window, Show View, go to Other, and then under Android, we actually want to check out this Emulator Control window. So this allows us to actually do a number of different things, including make it seem like a phone call is happening and things like that. But you can see under Location, we can actually provide a longitude and a latitude and send it to the emulator to trigger a change in location. So let's go ahead and send that. And now look at the emulator. And you can see it's actually updated this off the coast of Africa here. So again, by coming into our emulator control, we can actually put in any location data we want, send it to the emulator, and then we're going to be able to see those changes happening. And you can see here we have a little icon up here telling us that we have a GPS lock. So again, this is only scratching the surface of creating location-aware applications. Again, there's a lot that goes into finding the right balance between location accuracy and maintaining concern for things like battery life, because you don't want your application to be constantly searching for new GPS data when it doesn't really help your application, because that's going to really drain down the user's battery. So that's the basics of incorporating location data in, and I definitely recommend looking over this page on the developer site to give you more advanced functionality.